What's up guys, Sky Kevin here, and today we're going to be going over part 2 of the Lost Items of LO. We're going into many of the items I mentioned before, as well as a few new discoveries I've made now that admin commands are available on private servers. So, let's get started. First and foremost, let's take a look at the long-awaited weapon type. That's right, spears. In this case, it's the bound spear that I mentioned in my previous video. Now we can actually equip it and see the attack animations for the weapon. It's completely functional and has the same attack directions as a sing blade. I wouldn't be surprised if this was left in the game because it was essentially the original blueprint for using two-handed sword types. I know there has been concept art of many other weapons before, so perhaps the reason this has been included in every build of the game since is due to it including some kind of basis for how all the other swords were coded. That's the only reason I can really think that this is the predecessor to the sword, and especially because the overhead stab really makes a lot more sense with a spear as opposed to a sword. So likely the reason why the animation ended up that way was because it started out as the bound spear originally, and that code basis is in every two-handed sword since then. It's just a theory, but it does make a little bit of sense. Next, we have all the Rupu-specific weapons. These include Rupu maces, wooden clubs, and stone monkey swords. When you equip them, you can actually see all of the different looks actually reflect based on what the Rupu is holding. What I found most interesting about this is that although there are like five different types of stone monkey swords, they all for some reason have the same name. Their stats are all completely different. But I think what that means is Rupus on more difficult or advanced maps probably have a buff to their damage. So fighting a Rupu Hazraki on a medium tile is likely going to be weaker and easier to kill if you were to be fighting one on a hard tile. This is of course assuming they are equipped with this different weapon type. Still, it's very strange that there are so many different types of this weapon under the same name, yet with very different visuals and stats. The next is the Worm Vivarium. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this already since it's not hard to find in the free building menu on a private server, but just in case you haven't seen it before, this Vivarium, as I've been told, was once an early in-game mechanic where you could essentially raise baby worms by feeding them lava poppies. At the time, it was the only way to grow worm silk, which we can now harvest off of trees or the giant worm instead. I doubt they'll be putting this back into the official game anytime soon, but it's an interesting built relic of the past. Finally, we have the opportunity as well to physically test the Niberian tipped bolt. This item, still left in the game, looks and functions the exact same as the iron tipped bolt, although it does a considerably higher amount of damage. One thing that I found as a slightly interesting note was that in the test server, it's spelled Nibirian instead of the usual Nibiran spelling. The devs have confirmed this before that the proper pronunciation is Nibirian. So perhaps this is just a misspelling error, but this is the first time that I've ever found it spelled with the I in place. Next, we have the Peculiar Corundum, another one directly from my previous video. There isn't anything special about this item, and the item itself, when I tried testing any functionality currently in place for any stations or anything like that, doesn't do anything. Even when you drop it on the ground, it just shows up as the default bag as opposed to having any item mesh or graphic. Still, it's cool to finally see this in the game once again, and possibly see it used in the future for any kind of diamond related upgrades or weaponry. Next up, we have Toxic Remains. I have absolutely no idea what this item is or does. It's only 0.01 kilograms, and the tooltip says it's leftovers of a shamanic ritual. So possibly it's something like Shattered Fragments where you get it after some sort of crafting at a temple or point of interest, but I could also see it being a byproduct or something like that from weapons in the future. In fact, this is probably an item that was harvested from the idols in Rupu camps before when you were trying to get Rupu gel. Next up, this one is pretty straightforward, but the item is called Spare Parts. You'll recognize these are the actual literal item form of the walker upgrades. You can't click and drag these into any item slots or anything like that, but my guess is that these were initially some craftable parts that you could then attach to the walker later on as physical items. The one interesting one that I'm showing here is the base packing tier 1 upgrade. This one doesn't actually exist in the main game so far and might have been something introduced early on or as a possible addition to Siler and Belang bases. It's cool to see that this upgrade does in fact exist in the game for base walker packing. 
This next item is called the Water Pitcher. It's common, it can't be equipped in any way, but for some reason has a damage value of 2 and a water droplet icon, where normally you would have a hammer or sword icon. What's really cool about this one is the damage type shows that water droplet. I assume this was just put in the game maybe as some kind of mug or stein weapon with an experimental water type damage to it, but since I can't equip it, I guess we'll have to wait and see if it ever ends up in the main game. The next item is the test loot box. Now, of course we have the typical weapon, armor, tablet, and tool loot boxes, but in this case, the test loot box can give all types of fiber, fiber weave, wood, stone, and other basic resources. It's not much more than that, and I tried opening over a hundred of them with nothing out of the ordinary being pulled from it, but it was clearly used when they started making the loot boxes in the first place. The next item is the Test Rupu Turret Boulder. The name of the item is actually Explosive Dart, but it has the same look and stats of a boulder with less damage. The recipe most closely resembles the Explosive Bolt. It's a strange item how it's a mix of so many different values, but my guess is at one time they used this as an alternative ammo type for those Rupu huts on the top of the Spire's maps. Instead of floating mines, maybe originally they would shoot these boulders at raptor walkers flying past. Given the accuracy of most Rupu turrets, I bet they changed it to floating mines because the boulders would just always miss. Still, imagine a Rupu shooting a large boulder at you in your direction, dealing 500 damage in an AoE to anything on your walker. As an aside, you can actually find those floating mines as a command called Rupu Anit Air Floating Mine. That's right, somebody misspelled the name of the blueprint, so it actually says Anit instead of Anti. It's no big deal, but it's a neat thing that I caught as well. Speaking of names, I wanted to go over some of the original names for a lot of the items, since it gives a bit of a cool backstory on some things. Vision Powder, for instance, used to be called Cactus Extract, which makes a lot of sense. The code for Iron Ore is actually Iron Ore 2, most likely since they changed from the old Iron Ore graphic once upon a time to this new one. Rupu Gel was actually called Monkey Secretion, so now you know exactly where that pink stuff comes from. Fury Fumes was called Monkey Charm, and Sinus Destroyer was called Flaming Water. The Mallet Blade and other ceramic type weapons all originally were called Zirconium Swords instead of things like Mallet Blades. Personally, I like the idea of calling stuff Zerk Swords, I think that would be really cool, but I see why they wanted to differentiate the names of all the different types of weaponry. The advanced hatchet was the zirconium axe, and the hoof mace was the zirconium mace. I assume as well, ceramic was originally called zirconium as a material. Another interesting one, and topical for the coming months, is water circulators used to be called still suits. For those that don't know, a still suit is an exact reference to Dune, and likely why they changed the name. Lastly, we have the walker names, like Bird Skywalker being the Raptor Walker, Cabin Walker is the Mollusk, Caravella Walker is the Schmetterling, Cargo Walker is the Tusker, Fast Transport Walker is the Toboggan, Fast Walker is the Falco, Foundation Tier 1 Walker is the Belang, and Tier 2 is the Siler, House Walker is the Domus Walker, Packing Walker is the Panda, Pump Walker is the Camelop, Shuffler Walker is the Titan Walker, Tower Walker is the Cobra, Torque Generator Walker is the Hercule, and lastly, but certainly not least, the Worm Walker is the Hornet Walker. The other ones like Stiletto are all still the same name, but I know most walkers have an animal-based approach, so this is kind of cool to see what inspired their functionality as opposed to design. I'm sure there are a few other hidden gems that we'll be able to eventually find, and I'm super excited to see that we finally have access to the private servers with admin commands to test this stuff out and actually see the physical result of it. It'll be important to check back after any future updates to see if anything new has been added to the game, but if I did miss anything for now, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this on LO and other MMOs. I'm always making more similar videos to this one, and it really helps me to know that you've enjoyed it. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.